Well, welcome back to 2K Away. Welcome back. We're glad to see you. I think. <laughs> um, I am Paige. This is my sister Peyton. Was that better, Peyton? No, I wasn't so aggressive that time. A little bit, yeah. Okay. You're, I tried to soften things up. You're softer. A little bit softer. But we are two thousand miles away from each other. We talk about true crime, weird things, fun things, all the in between. So this week. Uh, we're going back to, I'm going to be talking about a serial killer this week. And I'm going to start out by apologizing to the entire country of France. <laughs> because this is a French serial killer. So his name, I'm going to try really hard. But it's not going to sound good. I shouldn't speak French. But to talk about this man, though. I, I really kind of feel like I need to tell you about the tale of Bluebeard because this man was, well, it's, it's strange because he was nicknamed the Bluebeard of Gambai, Gambai, Gambe, Gambe. Have to try to remember. <laughs> That's my process. Um, he's known as the Bluebeard of Gambe. The serial so, killer? The serial killer, yes. What time frame is this? It's old. Because, you know, like you said, the old oh. ones. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> How old is it? Well, this, okay. So this tale of Bluebeard dates back to the 1600s. He was not back then. He's still old, but not that old. So I'm going to tell you about Blue, the Bluebeard, the folk uh, tale first, and then I'll tell you about him so okay. this french folk tale it dates back to actually 1697 was the first like written thing about this folk tale so it's about this wealthy man who who's all of his wives because there was multiple ones they end up um mysteriously vanishing and he's nah. just like well that one disappeared so time to marry a new one let's let's yeah line That's them up the way it works so ultimately his last wife ends up finding a forbidden room in their house. Like he left her with, he's like, yeah, it's like it was something along the lines of he gave her the keys to the house and there's certain rooms that he had locked one. He was, she was not, she was like forbidden to go into, but curiosity got to her and she's like, I'm gonna find out what's in this room. And she opens the room and um finds all of his dead wives in this room <laughs> yep so the man comes back finds out that she found out a secret he's super pissed and he threatens to kill her but she tricks him into waiting she's like hold on okay i get it i get that you're mad um i'm probably gonna be added to this but just can you hold on a second just let me wait. Um, let me pray a little bit first. I want to pray one more time before you kill me. Then, you know, by all means, have at it. But in reality, she was just buying time because she had gotten word out to her family. And so she's like, crap, my family's not here yet. So I need to buy a little time. So she's, let, she's like, let me pray and then you can kill me. Well, in the meantime, he's like, okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, go ahead, pray. In the meantime, her family gets there and they kill him. And, you know, she like, yay, this man's off the face of the earth and I'm going to live happily ever after. Okay. So that brings us. That's a, <laughs> it's an interesting tale, but you'll understand why he is called the blue beard of Gumbe okay. when you hear what happens. So his name is, and I'm going to try to this my best, Henri Desiree Landreau. So it looks like Henry, which is why I was like, you know, Henry of, no, Henri is actually, Henri? okay. Henri is how I've heard it pronounced in multiple different things. Um, that's hard for me 
So I'm just going <laughs> to call him Landru because that's easier for me for some reason. Yeah, but it's going to, instead of being like Landru, it's going to be like Landru with us. <laughs> Landru. Unfortunately, yeah. That's okay. Uh, we'll, no. We're trying our best. <laughs> I'm going to try not to just. Yeah. Okay. So this is not exactly how Landru's story ends, um, but it's definitely where he got his nickname. So he was born on April 12th, 1869 in Paris. His family were, his family were devout Catholics and he grew up in, in the church and was an altar boy at one point in time. He was educated by the monks in the church. Um, by the time he had graduated, he was a sub deacon. Oh. So like very active in the church. And by all accounts, he had a healthy, well-rounded childhood. So it wasn't like anything weird happened or anything like that. Um, just a normal Catholic boy. He did actually end up serving in France's military. Um, I got three or four years from a couple different sources. So I thought I'd just three or four. Either one. So like your basic military service, um, if you're just doing your one one tour or whatever. So after his military service, he began a relationship with a cousin of his. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he had at least one child with her question mark. I call, I saw conflicting stories though. And if I, I got stuff from a few different sources and I saw conflicting stories of whether he actually married her his cousin or whether he married another woman don't another know which <laughs> no not another cousin just okay. another woman just had the one kid with a cousin and married another woman or he's like you know what i'll make an honest woman out of you cousin let's get married i don't know either way he did get married okay. and had three more kids okay maybe with the cousin don't know can't know. confirm cannot confirm so either way he's married he's got four kids now um he does find employment somewhere i don't know exactly where this original employment came from but he was swindled out of a decent amount of money by his employer so yeah however i'm sure he wasn't super happy about it why wouldn't be either but instead of taking it personally and trying to do better or even trying to go after this man for the money that he lost you know things that normal people would do he took it as a teachable moment as in i should do this myself (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) all right which is what he did well you know (laughs) he was like all right oh you know man like that damn was a good one. that was good he got me real good he really got me oh, okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that that sounds like oh man this sounds like a good thing so he all would right. quote unquote un- invent things so i've seen some things where he's they were like oh he was a amateur inventor he really liked to invent things my personal opinion i think he was like inventing things hard quotes around that because he wanted people to invest in his inventions and what he would do is he would take the money and just leave and nobody would hear they wouldn't hear from him again so he wouldn't he would he go as far as to make a patent for whatever he was quote unquote inventing i don't know about that okay but because i know like like patent fraud that's i think a thing and that's very frowned upon yeah um don't know about that but i just i do know that like i said he would get people to give him money to invest and he would just be like thanks i'm out okay all right yeah Mm -hmm. yep yep so he was caught doing this um apparently he wasn't great as a fraud because he was caught and served a couple of years in prison yeah well, some people just can't seem to hack it being <laughs> frauds well his first prison stint started in 1900 oh so after he was released he just 
continue to do all of the things that he was doing before. So there was no reform there for him. No. Um, Nope. He just was trying to think of new ways to swindle people. So after he was released at this point in time, like I said, continued to do what he wanted and became estranged from his wife and kids, maybe cousin, don't know. So he found himself back in prison by 1904. So he wasn't out very long. It didn't seem. Yep. Um, because he was caught trying to defraud a bank somehow. Oh my God. <laughs> this dude. You know, I mean, I guess I have to give him respect. He's decided to choose this path and he's really trying. <laughs> I mean, so I, yeah, guess I guess I, I give him a little respect for following his dreams. <laughs> that is until a few years later when you hear what he does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I already don't respect him, but I guess like kudos to you for doing what you want, I guess. Sticking with what you want, I guess. Right. Okay. So, um, so this time when he was in prison, he was a real shit bag because he made a fake suicide attempt. Oh. So this got him an examination by a psychiatrist. I'm assuming exactly what he wanted because it said that he was- Wait, during his time in prison, he faked a this, suicide attempt? Yes, this okay. second stint in okay. prison. Because it said that he like, the you know, the typical bed sheets, he wrapped it into like a makeshift rope, hung it from the ceiling and like stood on something and was like holding it there until a guard came by and then he hurry up and put it around his neck and was like oh uh, yeah um, so like being a real shit bag like dude gotcha. okay 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 well um this psychiatrist that saw him said he was in quotations on the frontiers of madness but not insane quite yet so it means that he was responsible for his actions <laughs> But the, on the frontiers on of the madness, frontiers of madness, that's so poetic. <laughs> I, mean, I, I want that in like like wall decals, right? You know what I mean, yeah. We're on the so frontiers this, of madness. Madness. So like the psychiatrist was like, he could get there, but no, he knows what he's doing. He's full of shit. Yeah, totally full of shit. So he was let out again after his sentence. Um, but again, return to his fraudulent ways. Well, so this time he's trying to make a life for himself. Paige. He is. Yep. So this time he tried to swindle money out of a wealthy widow, which I think was the start to his future plans. Ah, so his criminal ways actually drove his father to suicide. Um, this time that he was in prison. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. He's a real shit bag. He's like faking it, like fully faking it, not like an attempt and it didn't work. It yeah, wasn't so, anything like that. He was fully faking it. So what you're telling me is Henri is not a good guy. Henri is not a great guy. Not a good guy. So I don't feel as bad for not pronouncing his name correctly. Because so. he's, he's a, he's a, he's just, a shitty he's guy. A good guy. Yeah. He's not a good guy. I don't think I have really any other um, names in here to m- mispronounce. So i don't okay. think i'll have that big of bad of time so anyway fast forward to 1914 so he was out of prison again and completely neglecting his family of he course. conned a ton of investors to give him money for a car factory he was going to build mm-hmm. so obviously he took all the money and ran so before the police could arrest him, he fled. So they didn't get him. So he does. Uh-huh. But they did try him in absentia. So oh. even though they didn't have him, they still held a trial for him. Oh. Regardless, and they found him guilty. And I would hope they would find him guilty. He's not even there. <laughs> Well, and they sentenced him to exile for life in New Caledonia. Damn. Okay. So they're like, exile, leave. So, so France was like, the fuck out of here. 
essentially like yeah they're like your right. your life of fraud is done we're done with you your new caledonia's problem now <laughs> that makes me think of um yankee jim from the whaley house <laughs> who they decided to hang just for stealing a boat right <laughs> yeah that's what yep. it reminds me of like yep. you're fraudulent so get out of the country the entire country you're no right? longer allowed to be here in this country yeah you cannot yeah. set foot on our land all right yep well obviously he didn't go there <laughs> he stayed in france right so since he was a shit bag uh the money he got from those would-be investors it wasn't enough for him he was like not. no i need i need more so and this is just disgusting he started putting ads in the lonely heart sections in the newspapers like dude you are disgusting yep so he would advertise that he was a widower with it's children also, it's also crazy that that was ever a thing i know it's well like I mean, the really early version of like tender right yeah well he would advertise that he was a widower with children with a comfortable income and no. in good society wanting to meet a widow to marry Wow. So he wanted to make sure I am in good society. Like people like me here. Don't so, worry. I am right. a job. I'm a, I'm a, I'm comfortable. My wife passed away. I've got kids. Boo hoo. In right. reality, you are neglecting all of your kids and wife. Like dude, whatever. Piece of shit. Yep. Um, unfortunately the ad worked a few times and to top it off this is when world war one was starting so there was going to be there was about to be a lot of widows yeah unfortunately so it did work a few times yeah well the first woman to fall for his bullshit was a woman oh i totally lied i have some names um so this was a woman named jean couchet mm -hmm. that one was much easier than his name she was a seamstress um, who actually she sewed lingerie I, I read in a couple Jean. sources yeah she had lingerie spicy she um she also had a 17 year old son so she was a widow mm -hmm. but he used an alias to seduce her and gain her trust yeah cause because his name's of course garbage he did. now yeah right so but the the thing is though sh she ended up finding out who he really was because he kept some type of journal with his aliases on there and you know other people who he had conned well <laughs> so so like she found that and she wanted to break off the relationship she told her family that it was over because of, i mean he met her family and stuff yeah told her family that it was over but Landrew, he convinced her to stay and by the next year both madame couchet and her son both disappeared oh somehow lingerie was able to take control of her assets but she had just disappeared nobody knew where her or her son was yeah so the thing about him he was able to con nine more women the way he did with madame couchet wow they all went missing the same way she and her son did so the son was the only first of all only kid essentially um yes and no i'll tell you in a second i'm gonna list them all but um that was the only child of of the women so the rest of them were all women that he had conned into a relationship essentially with because i think almost all of them were widows right um so i, I found a lot of stuff about M madame couchet mostly because he was her, or she was his first victim mm -hmm. i didn't find a whole lot about the rest of them but what they were able to do is they were able to somewhat piece together a timeline of when these women went missing and after madame couchet um had gone missing right so they they this is the order that they think what happened so after madame couchet and her son in 1915 there were three others that year in 1915 in 1915 wow yes. because they also think that some of them like there was 
I don't remember which one, but they think that he actually had like a two year relationship with one woman where in that time frame, he had, you know, got relationships with other women and killed them as well. So like wow. during his two year relationship with one of the women, others went missing as well. Gotcha. But this is the, this is the order in which they think it happened. So after Madame Couchet and her son, there were three others. There was 46 year old Therese Laborde line. I'm so sorry. How old was, um, Henri? Madame Couchet. Oh, Henri. Let's yeah. see. How old was he? 46. Okay. Sorry. So he's in his forties. Okay. So the, um, next one after Madame Couchet was 46 year old Therese Laborde line then 52 year old Marie Angelique Guilin and 55 year old Berthe Hion Hion H-E-O-N Hion I'm not sure you're asking the wrong guy I'm not I can't do French very well it's beautiful but it's not beautiful when I say it yeah yeah but those three women were after Madame Couchet. That was all in 1915. Okay. And he was able to somehow get all of their assets. Then in 1916, there was 44-year-old Anna Collum. She was the only one in 1916. Maybe it was her that they thought was the longer one or one of the other women or something along those lines. Because like I said, Marie Angelique was only one in 1916. Or I'm sorry, Anna Colum was the only one in 1916. Then in 1917, there was 19 year old Andre Babelet, 47 year old Celestine Boisson, and 38 year old Louise Jaume. 1918, 37 year old Anne Marie Pascal. And then final victim was 37-year-old Marie Therese Marchand- Marchandier. And that was in 1919. Oh. So his reign of terror lasted from 1915 to 1919, four, four years total. So while his tale doesn't end like the true blue, Bluebeard, that's why he was called Bluebeard because he had so many quote unquote wives basically they're all mistresses for him because he was married this entire time yeah so he never married them but they all went they all ended up going missing so what happened was the sister of madame busson who was victim number eight i believe she was the one one of them that went missing in 1917 so this was two years before his final victim so Her sister, she became worried about her sister when she had gone missing in 1917, because that's, Mm -hmm. that's when Madame Busson went missing. So she went to the police immediately once, once her sister had gone missing. Right. She didn't waste any time, but the police were too caught up in what was happening with world war one. Right. To really bother with a single missing person's. So it just kept getting overlooked, unfortunately. But the the crazy thing is this, a lot of these women introduced him to some of their family. So they all, a lot of them saw him and and Madame Busson's sister could pick him out because she'd met him before. So she wouldn't let it go at all. I don't blame her. Yeah. So she kept going to the police and kept going and like was basically essentially harassing the police like dude my sister is missing what good yes so finally once the war was over that's when they took her seriously and was trying to find her sister but this is two this is two years later you know so what she was able to tell them is she knew her sister had told her about a man she had met and where he had lived and I don't remember how she had seen him at some point in time, but she had at some point in time. So they were able to find him at this place and they arrested him on oh, really? his, on his 50th birthday, nonetheless. Mm-hmm. That's funny. <laughs> Happy fucking birthday. <laughs> yeah. It's 
throw your ass so, in jail. Uh huh. So he refused to tell the police who he really was because clearly, I mean, she only had an alias of his. Um, so he refused to tell the police who he really was, and he denied his involvement in the disappearances of any of the women. Yeah, any women whatsoever. Well, of course, of course especially, especially her, obviously. But he's yeah. like, I don't know anything. Nope, nope. Women didn't disappear around me. I don't know what you're talking about. So they found out that he had had a house in Gombe and he had a specially made giant stove in this house, in his kitchen. Oh, yep, mm-hmm. yep, yep, yep. They also found his journal, like his little diary that he kept all of his aliases that he used and the woman he used it on. So like, wow. he, I mean, he had, I mean, Come on, you gotta keep track somehow. You're not gonna be able to remember what name I, you used I on guess. this woman. Come I on, guess. you gotta keep track of it. You know what? You're, you're right. That good. You're right. I'm sorry. I. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So they were finally able to see that he had stolen the financial ass- a- assets, assets, <sighs> assets of ten missing women that just happened to be in his journal. So like he even had some of their possessions and everything, obviously serial killers, typically uh, some serial killers keep possessions, right? Trophies. But like all of the women were in his journal. Yeah. They were like all these women, their assets were taken by some dude and they're all missing now. And your name, their names are all in your journal. Hmm. Let's see. So they were finally able to charge him with 11 counts of murder in 1921. So this is two years after he was arrested initially. Yeah. So they didn't get to charge him until 1921. But his trial was kind of insane because a shit ton of people, including celebrities of the time, they attended his trial. (laughs) I don't, I didn't get specific celebrities, but like. It was a just, a I don't want to say mass reported or whatever, but it was very it was publicized. A, yeah. It was very publicized. It was a spectacle. Yeah. Like you said. Well, I mean, that's kind of like the Paris morgue, the Paris morgue, like no matter how like dark and creepy it sounds, that was a spectacle uh-huh. and people would like dress up in their Sunday's best to go to the morgue and go see yep. the dead people on display. You yeah, know, I, I saw that. Um, where they had it wasn't a huge place i guess the trial but there was yeah where they had the trial it wasn't a huge place but i read at some point there was like 500 people in this room just like wall to wall shoved in here trying just trying to watch this trial yeah um he denied his he denied 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 he never ever was like yeah here's how he did it so it lasted 23 days total. Did they find anything in that big ass stove of his? Well, hold on. Oh. Because up to this, they were like continuing to investigate even during his trial, I guess. Well, that, that's what they did with Oba Chandler. They kept yeah. investigating because they were trying yep. to put him in the bay at the time of the murders. Well, the problem with this was they didn't have bodies. No. The women were just missing at this point yeah. in time. They weren't actually. They weren't actually. Said like, to be dead. Right question did any of these other freaking women's family report them missing i mean they had to have because they knew that these women were missing when they found them in his journal okay. but madame busson's sister was the adamant one of you have to find my sister that's crazy yeah so during his trial so again he denied his involvement in any of this up to even up to any of this right denying the entire time he's innocent he's innocent he's innocent however during his trial he drew a picture of his kitchen and wrote the sentence now obviously he wrote it in french i will not be giving it to you in french no (laughs) you don't want me to give it to you in french no we don't want that (laughs) we would lose all french listeners (laughs) so what he what it says was it is not the wall behind which a thing takes place, but indeed the stove in which a thing has been burned. So what they did was the prosecutor said, why would they- you do that doing your fucking trial? <laughs> no, I know. 
So the prosecutor said, and this is probably what happened because um, I do believe, I don't remember if I said, I said, say this later on, but they did find bone fragments. I, I don't know if it was like in his stove or like out in his garden or something, but there was like, there was bone fragments somewhere okay. on his property. So they say that he killed the 10 women unknown causes because nobody knows how they died because yeah. again there's no bodies and there's only fragments of bones so well, it's especially not like, how many years after is this well this is 1921 yeah so then however many years after even the last woman was killed well right was like... this started in 19 uh 1915 is when the first women women went missing so oh, this is yeah, six yeah. years later been years and i don't even know if fingerprints were really a thing then i don't think so i don't we'll think do so an episode on fingerprinting yeah That'd be fun. so so they say that the, he killed the 10 women and 17 year old boy by unknown means and then burned them in his stove until there was nothing left of them and i do believe they were able to contact and and interview people around them like neighbors and such that said that um his burning stove smelled awful as it would so like sweeney todd oh yeah here it is even though they never found any evidence other than a few bone fragments that they couldn't actually identify they couldn't they couldn't actually say that these bone fragments were from women they just knew that they were human bone fragments mm -hmm. so i mean they don't because well, at that point if it's just fragments you can't tell male or female well, no, exactly. Cause they, as they mentioned, they didn't have any pelvic bones. So you couldn't actually say if it was a man or a woman, they couldn't yeah. tell really what they were. So, um, so even though they didn't have any of that, that actual like hard evidence, and even though there was no bodies found, the jury found him guilty in just three hours after 23 day trial. <laughs> That's and so funny. They sentenced him to death. Well, of course they did. It's they were not in in France, um, and he still maintained his innocence the entire time up to death. He yeah. maintained his innocence, even though he drew that picture and like basically <laughs> highlighted that stove. And on the back was like something's got to burn, you know, whatever. Yeah. In just three months' time, he was executed by guillotine on February twenty fifth. 1922 and which now that i know this i wish i would have paid more attention i thought i paid attention but i guess i didn't pay this much attention his severed head is on display at the hollywood museum of death that was my same reaction which room <laughs> I don't remember. I think Ryan seems to remember it kind of. He said it was like he's a liar. <laughs> I'm, I I think he is too. So liar. he he said it was like next to where the guillotine little thing was about the guillotine. And said, you know, this is Henri Langeru, and he was executed by guillotine on the you know 1922. Which room was the guillotine room? I don't remember. That's why I'm like now I want to go back. Damn it. <laughs> I want to go back. I'm going to go see if it's open. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I told Ryan, I'm like, you know what? If I had known that eventually I'd be holding, you know, hosting a true crime podcast, I would have taken notes. <laughs> I would have read everything. <laughs> I mean, I, tr I did try to read everything, <laughs> but I mean, I would have like, so I know I have to give you my phone, but can I take a pencil and some notebook paper can i can i take notes is that okay <laughs> i swear i won't take any pictures but right. can i just, i don't want to take pictures some, it's fine <laughs> i'm gonna write some things down That's so but funny. yeah so yeah he was executed by guillotine in uh, 1922 and, and you said his head is on display his, his severed head severed is on head. display well, at to, the museum of death i'll have to see if it's open because if it if it anything the next night shift that i have i'll go and i'll look at it. <laughs> seriously well, i'll tell you what it looks like well that's like um peter Curtin. he's a serial killer from germany his uh -huh. head is on display in a i believe it's a ripley's believe it or not in wisconsin that's a very random place 
right? I don't know. I don't know why it's there, but it's there. His head is in Wisconsin. Yeah. Interesting. They have it split so you can see his brain and everything. Oh, that's fascinating. I'll show you a picture. So um, I did read that they had, they had buried obviously his, the rest of his body Mm -hmm. um, somewhere in Paris, but I guess they They decided to keep the head. Yeah, they kept the head. I know it's weird. Um, And I think they had to place him somewhere else. I think his, the rest of his body ended up going somewhere else. Wait, so it was originally buried in Paris and then they had to move it? Yeah, to another um, to another graveyard somewhere. I don't know why. Well, they they may have done it like um like Ed Gein's where they actually just took off the headstone because it kept getting vandalized. Yeah, yeah. It might have been the same with him. So, I'd like to just add this as a as a quick aside too. So, one of my sources that I saw actually said that his wife and kids knew about all of his fraud stuff wait not the killings just the fraud the fraud and would help him oh question mark okay so i think that should be said just um because he didn't he didn't live with all of them because he was you know parading around with all these other women because he abandoned them right because um i did see that his wife had said something about him being a skirt chaser like that's <laughs> disgusting <laughs> great Oof. but um she was just so in love with him that i mean she just would help him in his fraudulent ways okay i don't know about that but like, um he- like henry duncan hel- helping helen right right with her puke and cheesecloth <laughs> yeah but yeah no he was just killing women Wow. That's just, it's, it's so nuts though, because they don't know how these women died. They just disappeared and they're assuming that he burned them all in his stove. That's honestly crazy to think about though, because he would have had to get that stove incredibly hot. Uh Huh? That would have been like an, I don't, I don't exactly know the temperature, that you need to technically cremate a body but that that's nuts yeah do you know what the stove looked like um i do think picture of it? i don't know if there's an actual picture of it or if it's just like a drawing or what or, it or a, the or type a, of stove that it was or an artist interpretation or something uh-huh. i don't know damn but um yeah so. i would like to know how big that stove is because did I no don't... one did no one question the size of the stove who are you cooking for i mean he had four kids and That's, a wife no don't give me that i mean if he didn't on. live with them why would he have a stove that big the stove maker may not have known that he was a fraud he was a con artist yeah you're right come on he, he probably, probably told him he had 10 that. kids that's probably yeah you're right you know so yeah so he just he really liked um being um, a piece of shit well yeah yeah and he and he really liked to um fraud people out of their money and i i did listen to a podcast too that was like okay so did he like was he one of those serial killers that did he like to kill these women is that what his aim was or was it just to steal their stuff right because there could be a a couple different motivations here because it was also said that a lot of them he he ended up because they they also think that he he may have done this to more women it's that he just didn't record basically so it probably could have been more women it could have been but i think someone like him who is so organized to take the time to write everything down because there's been other killers that have done that where they have kept a journal and kept record of everyone that they right killed or assaulted or something like of that nature i doubt that Mm -hmm. i doubt that he would not record somebody yeah unless it was like maybe a very first one it was like oh i'm getting the hang of things and Mm -hmm. now i've really gotten into my stride of doing this 
So yeah, there could be a couple different things that motivated him. It could have been like, yeah. maybe I, I he's really just started like killing people or if it's truly just for their possessions. Well, and it was also said that there was other women that he would like woo or whatever, essentially. And he wouldn't kill them. He would have just essentially break things off of them, but like swindle them out of some money and then just break things off essentially. So they think have- that there was some, there were some people that said that these are the women that just got, I don't know how else to say it other than clingy and annoying to him, essentially. Like these are the women that didn't want to let him go. So he's like, well, since you wanted to come back off with your head, you know, something along those lines. Okay. That's interesting. So because, because there was other women that the, that he actually did break things off with, he just got some of the money. Was it, um, do you know exactly like how wealthy these women were or what exactly he got from them? Cause it could be no. like, Oh, I just got this little bit from this woman but this is like a big payday. So she has to go completely. Could be. Or something of that um, nature. But I just, I just know that he, again, with the rest of the women, I, I don't, didn't see a whole lot about the rest of the women. And, you know, I just got their ages and their names mm-hmm. and, and what year they went missing. So they could have been the wealthier ones. That could have been the case. Yeah. And maybe the women that he let go, maybe they weren't as wealthy. If that's the case, if if that's the route that he took, he killed the ones that were the wealthiest and let the ones go that weren't. Or maybe he just wasn't able to get them to sign over their assets to him. And these women unfortunately did. Yeah. Right. Could be, could be. Uh, I mean, it's all speculation though. Cause yeah, I mean, you never know any number of reasons and avenues i just my my favorite thing was he actually got arrested on his 50th birthday <laughs> like that is good you're a big, you're a shit bag your whole life you. you know you're your shit bag your whole life and like on your 50th when you should be like celebrating like i just turned 50 we're gonna arrest you because <laughs> you're worthless good. yeah piece of shit yeah that's a crazy one yeah so that's the blue bit blue bird <laughs> blue beard okay. blue beard of gumbe i do think the legend of that is rather stupid but it's an interesting one that's yeah. an old old french folk tale a woman yeah. that has never been in a few rooms of her house no yeah that's some beauty and the beast shit hey you know what though there it's you know it's like um <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get to what I'm trying to say. This is my process. Um, like uh, Gacy, his oh. wife wasn't able to go, wasn't allowed to go like to his garage and or basement or something. Or no, he had a crawl space. Sorry, um, like his garage, his wife wasn't able, was not allowed to go into the garage. Yeah, so his I mean, kids, his kids weren't it's either. It's not unheard of. I know, but I just. Just me as a wife, so if my weird. husband told me, Hey, don't go into this room, you're not allowed in there, I'd be like, Bitch, <laughs> the fuck I'm not. <laughs> I pay for this too. Also, how big is your house to where you just don't need to go into that room? <laughs> well, this you know what I mean? the, the folktale, the dude was super rich, so they were in okay, essentially well, like makes... a castle type of thing. So, Beauty and the Beast, <laughs> right? Exactly, <laughs> they're in France exactly so yeah what's so, that what beauty of the beast was about <laughs> was that what that was based off of oh shit i hope not oh no probably not <laughs> <laughs> i don't know okay maybe no so, it wouldn't have been no it wouldn't have, no no it's no. not <laughs> No, you. There was only one aspect of this story that's like Beauty and the Beast. Nothing Just, else is like it. Don't go into this part of the castle. That's it. <laughs> yep, that's it. Alrighty. Well, that was the case of what's his name again? Oh, you're making me do it again, Henri Desiree Lanroux. Thank you for I'm joining s- us this week. I'm sorry. not. 
I'm not. Yeah. Sorry, France. <laughs> sorry, France. Sorry, France. I shouldn't speak French. It's not pretty. <laughs> we love it's you. It's a beautiful Please. language. It really and, is. It's so beautiful. And, and we you just know butcher what? it. And when I tried, I was trying so hard. I'm like sitting in my my recliner. Ryan's watching, trying to watch TV. And I'm like sitting at my computer. Ari, Ari. Ari, I'm just like saying it over and over again. <laughs> this is what he has to deal with. He's fine. So <laughs> I'm like listening. I'm I'm typing into like Google Translate and like speak it. Okay, speak it again. Okay, let's try this. Okay, yeah, but sometimes that bitch on Google's wrong. So, well, but I also watched um, some kind of little documentary type of deal. And I just kept rewinding and listening to the dude say it again. I'm like, okay, now I got to listen to it again. <laughs> yeah. I've done that with a few names too, where I'm like, oh God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's why I was like, yeah. Mon Drew, that is much easier. <laughs> we want to, we want to do you right, France. We love yes. you. Please don't stop <laughs> you're so, listening. <laughs> you're so beautiful. <laughs> we love you so much. We love you. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you again for joining us this week on 2K Away. Uh, if you would like to hear more from us, you can follow us on Facebook at 2K Away. You can follow us on Instagram at 2K Away Podcast. We have a YouTube channel. It's 2K Away Podcast. And we have a Gmail if you'd like to contact us or suggest something. We do have a long list, but we'll get to it eventually. <laughs> um, it is 2K Away Podcast at gmail.com. And every time you type the word two, it's the number two. So thank you for joining us this week. For another murder, murders. So we had fun. Yeah, hope you had fun. It's back to true crime now. We got our we got our paranormal and goofy stuff out of the way. Yeah, We're back to true crime. Yep. So, thank you for listening, and we will see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye.